So in this video, I'm going to go over how I'm going to prep my tank for a two-week vacation I have coming up. Um, this tank has been set up now for three weeks. Um, as I set it up, I kind of had that in mind knowing I was going to be gone for two weeks. So what I'm going to do is show you what I am going to do and what I'm not going to do before I go. Um, I don't want to mess with anything too much before I leave. Um, sometimes when you mess with things, the problem doesn't arise for several days. So I don't want to get a call from my tank sitter. My biggest concern when I leave for a trip is that my two-part system is not going to run out of uh, juice. So um, right now my two jugs that are hooked up are empty and I have these two full jugs that um, I'm going to hook up right before I leave. Uh, but my system uses about a gallon of each in about a two-week period, maybe a little bit longer than two weeks. However, in the past, I've always had this um, issue where when my house is empty, you know, the CO2 concentration in the apartment drops. So therefore my pH will go up. Um, and then when that pH goes up, usually my acros will kind of get like turbocharged um, and start really sucking down the alk. And then while I'm on the road, I'll have to, you know, increase my dosage. So it's possible this you know a single um, gallon of each two part is not going to be enough for two weeks um, so i'm going to have an extra gallon of each prepared so all my tank sitter has to do is just unhook the two jugs hooked up slide the two other jugs in and we're in business um, i have my co2 scrubber back here um, if you run a co2 scrubber and your house is going to be empty i would unhook it um, because the CO2 concentration in your house will drop, pH will go up, and then if you're further scrubbing out more CO2, uh, your pH actually might go well above a natural range and you could get into a, uh, a, a territory you don't want to be in. So um, I always remember to remove mine. Um, sometimes I forget, but if it's towards the end of the life of the media anyways, it's probably spent and not going to pull any CO2 out anyways. Here's where all the electrical happens under my tank. So I did have a big nest of wires here. Um, there's still a big nest of wires, uh, but there's a lot less. And this is actually only to a few things. So like my liquid level meters and connections to my apex. Um, so what I did last night was I mounted all of the power heads and DC pumps and different controller boxes to the top. Um, I got this idea from Jake Adams and uh, Reef Builders. He does this to all of his um, aquariums in the studio. So um, I really like that I, the idea of getting everything out of the way. Um, I don't really access these controllers very much. So having them up out of the way is, is pretty awesome. Um, but I was able to get um, my EB-8, uh, the old style uh, power strip in this little box, protective box. There's my EB832 and then the uh, control unit. I have a battery back up here that runs my Vortex. Um, so I have that running. That's my, I think right now that's my only source of backup power. I have a battery power air pump that turns on when um, it's unplugged, uh, but I don't feel like hooking that up. So at some point, I'm going to build a control box um, to house all the electrical, uh, you know, like the EB-8s and power strips and put my dose here. Um, but I'm gonna take my time and do it right. So in the meantime, I have some clear plastic panels that I'm gonna duct tape um, along the back here, along my auto top off side and along that side of the sump just to keep any splashing out of the electrical side. Um, but I'm happy that I was able to get all this crap out of here. So there's not just a big pile there anymore. This is the left side of my sump. So the drain lines come down here. Um, one is the main drain. This is an emergency drain. And then this is like a um, secondary emergency drain. So I should never have water go through this one. But if 
the other two clogged, uh, it's good to have a uh, second backup. Um, on this side I have, instead of running uh, filter socks, I have those filter media cups that I put in there, but they're empty. Um, so right now I just have them to kind of quiet the, uh, the drain line as the water comes in, kind of trickles down nice and silent before it heads over. Um, so if you do run filter socks, I would recommend removing them so they don't get clogged if you're going to go on vacation or a longer trip. Um, and if you do that and you rely on those socks for nutrient export, then maybe cut back your feeding a little bit. So my sump is pretty basic. Water comes in here, goes through the filter cups, and then um, I have my frag section, my skimmer, um, dose lines, I think my apex pulls water, or my trident pulls water from here, and I have my pH and temperature probe there. And then on that side is where my uh, return and auto top off sensor is. So I have a 10 gallon auto top off reservoir. Um, it's definitely not gonna be enough for two weeks. So I'm gonna drag out uh, at least a 20 gallon tote and then maybe some five gallon buckets uh, for my tank sitter to refill. Uh, but I have one of these liquid level sensors here for um, so I can monitor my auto top off uh, level. That way I don't have to rely on them to remember to check it every time. I can let them know when it needs to be refilled. Um, I'm thinking of pulling this outside of the stand for my trip uh, just because on the other side of this, like back here, that's where all my electrical plugins are. So if they spill over the back side, that could hit all my electrical. I'm either going to do that or put one of those plastic panels um, up there, kind of as a splash guard. On this end of my sump, I have my two heaters, I have my return pump. And then I have another one of the liquid level sensors or meters or whatever the heck they're called. Um, that level meter, while I have it calibrated so it's not like super accurate at the moment, I still, it is, you know, consistent. So I know if my, uh, the level in my return section of my sump is either too high or too low. Um, I'm going to program a little uh, code that if it's too low to turn my heaters off and alert me. Uh, that way my heaters don't run dry and then a little code to alert me if it's too high because then I know my return pump uh, is either off or my auto top off uh, went crazy. In addition to the liquid level meters I also have this water on the ground sensor uh, for my apex. Um, I put it right under one of my return um, bulkheads. This bulkhead uh, Actually, the PVC elbow cracked the last time I was gone and leaked a little bit. Um, so I know this is kind of a low point in the tile where the water will collect. So I put this here. I'm not going to program it to do anything other than alert me um, because if it is just a light leak, I'm just gonna either have it have a tank sitter repair it or just let it, you know, leak a little bit till I get back. Um, I do have my camera and my liquid level meters to tell me if it's something catastrophic, uh, but this will at least, uh, you know, give me peace of mind that there's not a leak, or if there is a leak, I can look into it right away. This is my emergency plumbing kit for when I'm gone. So I have my pipe cutter and tube cutter. I have a big wrench. I have uh, 15 feet of three quarter inch tubing. I have a ball valve in case one of my returns needs to get uh, shut off. And then I have um, PVC glue and solvent for uh, PVC pipe. I also have about five feet of a one inch PVC pipe uh, in case one of my return line or drain lines uh, cracks or has an issue. So um, it's good to have a reefing buddy that could try to replumb your tank if there's an emergency while you're gone. Up on top, I have my Eheim auto feeder. I really like this auto feeder because it's like, I don't know, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, they last quite a while. I had one last, I think it was about eight years before um, it finally corroded on the inside, um, but I bought another. So I'm gonna have this just kind of drop down into the tank. 
Um, but I was testing out last night and the way my return kind of comes out here, um, if it, the food drops on this corner, it kind of just swirls around here um, before it sinks. So I don't really have to worry about it going in the overflow too much. Um, so I have auto feeding and then I'll have my uh, tank sitter come and feed frozen uh, once a day or every other day. So this is a temporary fix for a issue I had. Um, these are the drivers and control boxes for my Stratons. I had them initially on the ground behind the tank, um, but with such expensive lights, I probably shouldn't have the electrical components exposed to potential splashes. So I zip tied them to my light rack um, and then put all the, the electrical cords up there uh, for now. Uh, that is not permanent. I'm gonna build a little cabinet or a basket or something, put everything in back here that's kind of up and out of the way. Uh, but for now, I want those off the ground so they don't get splashed while I'm gone. If you find yourself worrying about your tank when you're gone, it might be wise to invest in a Wi-Fi camera, like a Nest Cam. That way you can check in on your tank anytime you're worried about it. Um, it can save you some peace of mind when you're sitting on the beach worrying about your tank. Um, so you log in, check in on your tank, and get back to your vacation. All right, so to summarize my tips, uh, if you can have a sitter come by periodically to check on the tank, um, even if they're not a reefer, just someone that can come feed your fish, kind of look at things. It's kind of easy to train a non-reefer to look out for, you know, pumps making a weird noise, water on the ground, auto top off reservoir if it's full, um, those kind of things. Um, when I leave more than a week, I like to have someone that is a reefer come by at least once. Um, so I'm going to have someone come by each week that is a uh, reefer um, that can kind of take a look at stuff that might not be obvious just to make sure nothing's out of the ordinary, my skimmer's not overflowing, those kind of things. Um, and then that way, if they're familiar with my system, if something does go wrong, uh, I can call them and have them come out and kind of fix it. Next most important thing, fill your auto top off and make sure you have enough water for your trip. If for whatever reason you run out while you're gone, um, have your tank sitter just go buy um, distilled water. It's, you know, in the past I've heard people say that distilled water can run through uh, copper piping and could have copper in it. I believe that's not really an issue anymore. Um, so in a pinch, distilled water is better than tap water for sure. If you do any automated dosing, uh, make sure your containers are full and have enough juice for the duration of your trip or be prepared to have a tank sitter uh, swap out or add more of that solution. Um, if you do manual dosing on anything, um, kind of evaluate, is it important that it is kept up and that you have a sitter you know, doing that manual dosing for you? Or is it something that you can ignore for however long you're gone? Um, at the moment, I manually dose nitrate and um, aminos but I can skip that for two weeks and probably won't see any difference. As I said earlier, if you have a CO2 scrubber, um, make sure you disconnect that before you leave if your house is gonna be empty. Uh, if you leave but the rest of your family's still there, um, maybe refill it, you know, swap it out to make sure that it doesn't run out while you're gone. Um, dial your skimmer back just to make sure it won't overflow while you're gone. I've had that happen and I had Cyanide issues right after that. Uh, my corals looked great, but I would rather have not had the battle cyano than have my corals look the way they did. So the reason why you should dial back your skimmer is um, the amount of food your tank sitter adds or your auto feeder adds might be different than what you normally feed. And if it's more or you remove your filter socks, your skimmer might uh, be overactive and kind of overfill by the time uh, you get back. If you do auto feed and it's not something you do normally, you're setting up for your trip, uh, set it up a few days earlier so you can monitor how much it's actually dosing. 
one thing I always think about, you know, a week or two before I, I go on a trip, uh, what have I done in the past month to my tank out of the ordinary? And are any of those things, um, things that will have to happen every week or every day, or could something happen while I'm gone? You know, for example, um, you know, if you have corals that fall off the rock or slide. So I have some corals that are just kind of sitting on the ground and sometimes they move around and I have to adjust them every couple days. Um, so what I'm going to do for some of those is I'm going to glue them down or move them or kind of brace them so they don't move while I'm gone and don't have to worry about that. There could be other things too, like if your skimmer always gets clogged with snail shells or if a pump always gets clogged with something or fails or slips or moves, make sure you address that before you go because if it happens while you're gone, um, it's a lot harder to tell a non-reefer tank sitter how to change that. Um, for me, I travel for work every now and then and I go on a lot of like personal trips. Um, so when I designed this system, I wanted it to be simple and I wanted it to be somewhat self-sufficient while still being semi-low tech. Um, that way I don't need my tank sitter to do anything other than feed my fish and uh, fill up my auto top off unit. Uh, so that's just something I did knowing that I'm going to be moving around a lot. Uh, I don't like to do a lot of manual dosing or rely on manual dosing. Um, I don't have mechanical filtration that needs to be swapped out or um, different filters that need changed. I don't run carbon or um, GFO that needs to be changed out so I don't have to worry about that. Um, one thing to consider as well, especially if it's summer or even in the winter, uh, don't adjust your AC or heater too much. Um, just because you're gone, don't let your AC go, you know, don't dial it back too much uh, because you could cook your tank or change the temperature in your tank. Um, I know mine, if I turn my AC off and it goes up a few degrees, I see that few degree increase in my tank. Um, and the same thing in the winter, if you, if you turn your heater back and your room gets cooler, maybe your heaters can't keep up with that temperature change. Um, your heaters aren't going to be able to, to, you know, really handle more than a couple degree change in temperature. They're not designed to take 40 degree water and keep it at 80 degrees. It's more of like keep room temperature water at 78, 80 degrees. Um, and then lastly, uh, because you don't want fires while you're gone, make sure all your electrical plugs are plugged in all the way and secured and that you have drip loops and anything um, protected so it doesn't get splashed with water. Um, so that is kind of the summary of my um, vacation prep tips. The last thing I do before a trip is I take a nice quality video of my tank, spend some good quality time with it uh, because it's the last time I could see everything alive. Um, all joking aside, if you follow these steps and you know take care of any issues that could happen, uh, keep your hands out of the tank uh, a few days before you go on vacation or take a trip, everything should be fine. I've taken you know, hundreds of trips in my years of reef keeping and have never come back to disaster. Uh, actually, more times than not, I come back and I go, holy shit, everything's looked the best it's ever looked. I should keep my hands out of the tank. And then I take the lid off and put my hands in the tank. So um, nothing to worry about, but you definitely need to prep a little bit before you leave. And that will wrap up my tips. Um, again, be sure to post any comments if I missed anything or you think that um, there's a method that I could do better um, and uh, feel free to share your tips as well.